Okay, um, we're ready to start now. And so I want to welcome everyone to uh, this presentation tonight, prayer conference here at the Village Church uh, here in uh, Walla Walla, Washington. Our address is actually College Place. And, uh, and we want to also welcome the presenters tonight, Rick and Cindy Mercer. And uh, I've gotten acquainted with them uh, as a result of being a part of a prayer group. Dwayne and Anderson. And hearing about the um, this book called uh, Pray Big. And um, I actually got the book in the mail. And when I started reading it, I could not put it down. And so we have the privilege now of having Rick and Cindy uh, to be able okay. to present to us tonight um, things about prayer and from their own experience. And, uh, He's visiting with his mom, but why don't I part of you a little further and then that's fine. And then you can I'll I'll face it mostly towards you because we don't know if he's coming or not. But um one of the things that we'll need to do since this is a uh a virtual thing is that everybody will need to be on mute on how do I get? Um, we did have a setting <laughs> to. I do it on an iPad, but he should be able to do it. But uh, just, to let, uh, just to let mind, there's a little thing at the bottom. Oh, it's it. not that. Huh? No. That's so the lower <laughs> left hand corner of your screen, there is an icon that says mute. Yours yeah. doesn't have. There we go. And then oh. click on that icon. It's it's a picture of a microphone. Just click on that and that'll mute your your conversation. And so everybody needs to do that. Um, if we have too many lines open at the same time, it'll create a, a lot of uh, interference uh, for the presentation. All right, so um, Rick and Cindy will be talking about their experience here and also giving us pointers and prayer. And um, before we get started, let's just pause for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we're thankful for this opportunity to be together. This is the time of the Sabbath. And um, Father, we have this opportunity to learn more about you, your character, your great heart of love, uh, who you are, and uh, the ways in which uh, we can uh, reach out to you and, and the ways in which you want to communicate and talk with us. I pray that you would bless this meeting here this evening. Um, please um, anoint Rick and Cindy with your spirit as they present. I pray this in your name. Amen. 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 All right, Rick and Cindy, go ahead and share with us. Okay. Well, first off, we want to start by just saying thank you. Thank you, Village Church, for having Cindy and I out virtually to join you. Yes. We, I want to see you and I can't see you, but, <laughs> um, but you know, this is what we, this is what we are learning to navigate yeah. with. And it's like I shared with you, Dwayne earlier, God's going to bless, um, because, uh, we've all shown up and, and we've said, uh, Lord, we want to learn more and, uh, he's going to bless that and show favor on our lives for that. So yeah. yes, thank you for having us. And we look forward to the day we can come in person, yeah. hopefully soon. What we thought we'd do tonight is we'd kind of break this up in three parts. Uh, the first part is we're gonna kind of paint a picture of what prayer looks like. Sometimes it's hard to, to um, sometimes our prayers don't seem like they go past the ceiling. And, and uh, it's like God's not listening. What's going on when we pray? We're going to look at scripture. We're going to share some testimony tonight in our own personal life with that. And, uh, but after that, you know, it's, it's good to, to talk about prayer, but, but if you want to see the miracles from God, you need to actually pray. Yeah. So we're going to spend some time in prayer to, uh, tonight too, probably 30 minutes of testimony. Probably what we'll do here after we, we give our testimony is we'll, we'll set aside about 10 minutes of time to where in groups where you're at, you can call out to God in prayer and God will honor our prayers. And we need to expect God to do something. We need to expect him because God is a, a prayer hearing God. He loves us and he cares about us. And, and then after we do that, uh, we'll probably, uh, the time remaining in the other, say, um, you know, 
15, 20 minutes, we're going to open it up for question and answers. You might have some questions that you uh, like to ask Cindy and I, and by, uh, we, would, we would like to hear you because this is all about God working in your life. We're going to share with you what God's done in our life, but we really want to see God work a miracle in your life too. Amen. So, and if, if we were there with you right now and had the opportunity to pass the microphone around, we're going to just pretend we're doing that. And, um, you know, I'm sure you're, I'm no different than anyone else. We've all had busy weeks and maybe some challenges, uh, maybe received a phone call with some news we didn't want to hear. Um, maybe, uh, one of our children are not making good choices. Uh, you know, we could go on and on. So I just want you to think about the fact that, you know, there's not a thing we can do about it right now. We can't change it. We can't um, fix it, but God can. And I just want to ask that you just take a moment and think about, as we go into this weekend, think about that one thing that, impossible one thing or you might go Cindy I've got like 10 things you know yeah. but but think of that one thing that you are just hitting a brick wall and you just cannot seem to get past it and I want you to ask God to show up and show up big in your life and that person's life or that situation and I want you to expect God to do big things That's as right. we go forward okay so let's get started uh, in in the Bible that's my favorite place. Tell you what, it changed my life. When somebody asked me if I'd like to study the Bible, you know, I was 40 years old before anyone had ever asked me if I'd like to study the Bible. Mm. I was 40 years old and never heard of a Seventh-day Adventist. How about that? True. And uh, so it, changed, it's a, it was a game changer for me. So let's, let's go to the, into the New Testament, Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12 and verse 1. Now, I love this story right here because it paints a picture of what happens when we pray. It's a beautiful picture of what can happen when we pray. Acts chapter 12 in verse one. I'll go ahead and get started. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and he delivered him up to four quadrants of soldiers. That's 16 soldiers to one man there to keep him intended after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. And I like this next word here. Peter was in prison. He was going to be executed the next day. But then the Bible says, but. That changes but, everything. But changes everything. <laughs> but changes everything it does prayer that's another word that changes everything amen prayer but prayer was made without ceasing of the church and to god for him now if you if we just look at this situation here it was looking really bad for peter uh you know his brother had already been killed uh it pleased the people it, it, it uh, uh his brother in christ it, it uh it 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 pleased the it pleased the the people. This was a political thing. He was going to be executed the next day. He was surrounded. He had sixteen soldiers. He was in lockdown jail. He was chained and shackled. Uh, there was, uh, he, uh, the, was the, a bad situation. He was in a bad situation. <laughs> but I don't want to stop just there, because not only do, do we have a situation where Peter mm -hmm. was in a bad situation, the church was too. Could you imagine this little church here? that was just trying to get started. And here, right off the bat, looks like two of their leaders were gonna be killed. I mean, it would have been devastating to the church. We're, we're, we're told in a little book called Acts of Apostles that, that, that it looked like that if God didn't step in and work a miracle here, that even the church was gonna be destroyed. So I love this picture here uh, of what happens when, 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 uh, when the church starts praying. This is a, a, a picture of the power of yeah, intercessory sure. prayer. It's a very important, uh, 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 gives an important Amen. message, the power of intercessory Amen. prayer. You know, I, I will tell you, I, I don't know how many of you ha have read the book or heard our testimony. I, I, I will assume a few of you have, but probably not all of you. And, um, 
you know, Rick and I were in a bad, a bad situation. Yeah. There's no, we could sit here and pretend that it was okay. And, and it was sometimes, but for the most part, we were in a bad situation. And, um, you know, I grew up in church from the time I was a little, I mean, a baby. And I had heard people pray. I, I knew that I should pray. I, I had heard great, wonderful stories about prayer, but you, like me, might be saying, but God, can you hear my prayer? And can you change my situation? I mean, sure, I know you answered prayers for Sally and, and you know, Jimmy, but can you, can you really do that in my life? And I had those questions and, uh, you know, things were looking pretty bleak and, and, you know, just to give you the cliff notes version, um, you know, things had, had come to what I call a, if you've ever had a really bad sore, you know, a, a pimple, you know, whatever, and it hurts and it's sore and it just constantly is, is just an annoyance. But when it finally can break and get through, you feel better. Well, I, I hadn't got to that feel better part. I was just um, miserable. Uh, he was miserable. She we was, were miserable. I was miserable because she was so miserable. <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh now. Yeah. But um, seriously, it, it was really rough. We had already had um, a, a time of separation. Um, don't really have time to go into all of that. But honestly, um, you know, what do we do when things get so very bad? Often that is the time that we drop to our knees and say, Lord, you need to help me out of this one, you know, and, and oftentimes we're not, we're not coming to him when things are going great. And so, uh, I, like I said, I'd been a Christian before, but I had, I had definitely got on the uh, lukewarm side and was not, not giving God my 100% allegiance. That is for sure. And so there I am in our bathroom one morning, getting ready to go to work early, early in the morning, crying out to God saying, Lord, I need a miracle and I need it now. Maybe you too have cried like that, or maybe you're doing that now. And it seems like there's nothing but silence sometimes, or like, Rick said they, you know, your, your prayers hit the ceiling and come right back down on your face. Well, that morning was a very, very different morning. I was crying out to God with all my heart. And I, and if, if you're taking notes, that's a real important note to take. When we seek the Lord with all of our heart, I, I can assure you that God hears that prayer. Jeremiah 29, 13. That's right. When you search for me with your whole heart, I will be found of you. That's right. So, Step number one is I was, I was really crying out with everything I had. Um, you know, Jeremiah 33 um, says, call unto me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. I really did not know what I was asking for. I, I really didn't know. I just needed help. I was just in a really bad spot. And I will tell you if I, I could spend hours trying to explain to you what happened in the next few moments, but it wouldn't do it justice because see, when you cry out to God with all of your heart, when it's between God and you, something special happens that only you and God can experience. You can't, you, you can't experience, Dwayne can't experience what me and God, mine and God's experience. I can tell you about it. I can tell you how wonderful it is, but it, it won't recreate it. But just suffice it to say that it was truly, for me, it was a miracle. Yeah. The miracle was that I was crying out and I know God was hearing me because in the stillness and the quietness of that early morning in my very desperate pl pleas, I, I was impressed that God was clearly with me, that he was hearing me and he wanted to help me and he wants to help you too. And what seemed to be an audible voice was if you leave your husband, 
you will not have a testimony. Wow. Now, that was pretty profound to me because all Cindy wanted to do was run, 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 run as fast as she could and as far as away as I could go. And, and, and Cindy had her plans. Cindy had her mind made up, even though I really thought, why not? Let, let me just let God, are you there? And I want to tell you, he was there. Amen. And I sensed that even God was wanting me to, to stay and pray and not leave. And I also got the impression that he wanted me to fast. I didn't know anything about fasting and we'll talk more about that tomorrow. So we will just kind of painting a, a, a quick picture here for you. But uh, I went on and went to work that day, just pondering what all had happened and what it all meant. I, I didn't know, but I will tell you another word if you're taking notes, is that I had made the decision that I was going to be obedient to what God wanted me to do. And I believe when it comes to our, our prayer life, when God is, is, when you sense God is wanting to take you there, go there. You will yeah. not regret it. And it changed my life. It, 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 like I said, it changed his life, ultimately our life. And so the, the very next morning, I made the most important appointment of my life. You know, we're really good at making appointments. We do, we get appointments to get our taxes done, to go to the doctor, get our hair done, all of those things, you know, and we, and, and for a woman, when it comes to a hair appointment, nothing will stand in the way. We'll cancel other, we won't cancel our hair appointment, especially after COVID when you couldn't even get a haircut for a while. But I made the most important appointment and that was an appointment with God. So the very next morning I got up, I have to get up really early at that time when I, were, I had to work at the surgery center and leave early, but I got up extra early, like 4 a.m., like crazy early. I don't like to get up that early, <laughs> but I did. And I, I made it to my table that morning with my Bible and with some pens and highlighters and a, and a book that I had purchased, a journal, a devotional book I had purchased, saving it for something special. And I knew now what that special moment was. And so I got up that next morning and I, I just said, Lord, here I am. I, I'm keeping my appointment. I want to hear from you. And I'll have to tell you the rest is history. I began keeping that appointment with God every day. And so it turned into, I will, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. My prayers were, Lord, please, please change my husband. <laughs> please don't let him drink. 15 beer every single day. Please don't let him um, smoke. Please don't let him do drugs. Please don't let, let him have eyes for me only. All of those things. I just wanted God to change who? Him. Yeah. Was that a bad prayer? Was that wrong? No. No, there's a good prayer. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I'll tell you, and, and we'll talk about it more over the weekend, yeah. but I'll tell you who got changed first. You already know it. It was me. Yeah. God wanted to change me first. Yeah. And we'll talk about that a lot more tomorrow. But I think what we want to do tonight is you probably brought something to the table tonight. Like, mm -hmm. like Cindy mentioned, you probably got something that you're, you're up against a brick wall. It's a situation. Maybe it's someone. What we, want to, what we want to convey to you tonight is that all things are possible with God. Amen. You see, in this, in this story that we read about here in Acts chapter 12, and also our own personal testimony, God had a plan for Peter's life. God had a plan for the, for the church, but, but it took people in, in interceding, uh, yeah. standing in the gap. It took prayer for God to work that change about. See, for some reason, and we'll, we'll get to talk to God about this right. uh, here uh, not very long from now, I think, the way things are looking, but we're going to get to talk to him about that. But God has chosen prayer as a way and a means to work changes here on planet Earth, changes in situations That's and right. also changes in individuals. Uh, we, we, get a, we get a beautiful picture here 
of what happens when we pray. There, there's a battle going on right now between good and evil. And uh, we know that right now it seems like even like the enemy is winning. But I want you to know, I've already looked at the end of the book here. Jesus wins. Amen. So you're on the right team. But uh, I love the picture that we get here when, when God's people pray. It, I could just picture the command post in heaven here. God's wanting to work in his church. Jesus had promised uh, his presence in the church uh, and his power in the church. Uh, Jesus had given the, the commission, the mission for, for, for the church and, and for his followers. Uh, but as they pray, as they pray, so God's wanting to work. But when they come together and pray, it's almost like the angels going, oh, I want to go to them and work in the church. Or let's picture Peter. The angel uh, is wanting to go and work in Peter's behalf and help Peter. And in and, and, uh, and my life, uh, the, my angels are wanting to go work in my life, but I wasn't praying. You know, it's, it's, it's something important to know. I was not praying for myself. That's the reason I know the power of intercessory prayer. Mm -hmm. I wasn't praying for myself. I didn't even know to pray for myself. Didn't know how to pray for myself. So lost, I couldn't pray for myself. Mm. But so Peter was in a mess. The church was in a mess. I was in a mess. But as the prayers went up, you could just picture God saying, okay, go and work. And an angel was sent to work in Peter's life. And we see that here mm. as, as the angel of the Lord came down and, and uh, tapped Peter uh, on the shoulder. He was sound asleep and, and um, told him to gird himself up. The chains fell off. The, the doors that were humanly impossible to open, opened. Uh, and we, we know that, that he was able to go free. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this very same thing happened in my life, the church. Now, you think about it. Did it excite the church? Mm -hmm. It more than excited so. the church. Mm -hmm. I wanted this little church, uh, the little group of people that led me to the Lord. Uh, it yeah. more than excited them once they yeah. seen the power of intercessory prayer. Right. It excited Cindy. I've got a, a quote here I want to share with you uh, in, in number two, Selected basis, Messages, page 377. All heaven is interested in the work that is going on upon the earth. Ministering angels are waiting about the throne to instantly obey the mandate of Jesus Christ to answer every prayer offered in Amen. earnest living faith. Amen. Now think about that. That's what happens when you pray. A lot of times we think, well, nothing's going on. I'm not being heard. My prayer's not answered. God is at work, friends. Right. Anytime you pray, anytime that you send up a prayer, it gives God permission to work. Just remember, there's a battle going on between good and evil the whole time. That's true. But just the, just the act of praying, though, we don't know what the outcome will be. That's, that's up to God. But I can tell you that it, just praying changes changes oh, yeah. you um you can't for example if you're trying to pray for someone that you pretty much had you've been at odds with them for lack of a better word and you don't feel like praying for them well <laughs> that's a litmus test you should be praying for them because when we don't when we don't feel like praying that's precisely the time we should be praying the most and when you pray for someone that you've not been getting along with, it changes your heart completely. Now, I don't know what may happen to that, that person in their life, but I know that yours will be changed for sure. In this story in Acts chapter 12, uh, God did send an angel down because they were praying. Mm -hmm. and, and Peter was set free, and he, and he did all these miracles in Peter's life. And we know that, that Peter was, was set free and, uh, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up in verse 11 here. It says, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know for sure that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the, of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house. Now, this is what I want to bring up here. And, and when, he, when he considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together, and they were still praying. They were still praying. They didn't send up a God is great, God is good prayer. They didn't, they didn't say, hey, we'll be praying. We'll be praying for Peter. We're going to go on home. No, they came together. They came together, and, and, they, and they prayed together here. Mm -hmm. It's so, so important to, to, to get that here. But the point I want to make right here 
is that that um, the, these people, when, when Peter knocked on the door, uh, this, the, this young lady came to the door uh, and, and she, she answered it. Uh, and she answered the door. And, uh, and when, when, when she did, uh, Rhoda was her name. And she recognized Peter's voice. So she turned around and she, and she shouted out to the crowd, hey, it's Peter, you know, the one we've been praying for. And you know what they did? Mm-hmm they just started kind of laughing at her and, uh, and, uh, and kind of said, no, that's not, that's not even, in, that's not even possible. That maybe, maybe, maybe it's his angel or something like that. It's not Peter. And so he, he continued knocking at the door uh, and they come in. The reason I wanted to bring that up is um, I call this the, the, and we called it on a prayer group that, that we're part of the shaky faith house church. Mm-hmm. I mean, friends, even if your faith is a little shaky, go ahead and pray anyway. That's okay, right. just pray, yeah. pray. I don't it's the it's the only hope you got but anyway. So just pray, friends, and 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 God will work a miracle. Well, I was just going to say that you know I was just thinking about the technology that we're using right now. We are we're in Northwest Arkansas. People are on here from Alabama, but yeah. I know that this is being simulcast from the um the church there in washington and i'm like how does that how does that work yeah i don't understand how that works i don't understand how i can text someone in romania and i'm talking seconds later they text me i don't understand it but does it keep me from texting does it keep me from zooming no i do it because it it works and it's the same way with prayer i don't understand it i for the life of me I can't wait to ask, ask Jesus. About we know it, so we know it works though, friends. Prayers. We know it works because we're on this picture right now talking to you. That's fact. This is a miracle from God that he worked in our life here. Amen. Uh, two things, two big miracles happened. First off, Peter was set free. Yep. The second miracle is the church was set on fire. Mm. Now I, I believe, and we, we've talked about enough now about, about prayer. So I believe that there's people out there that, that you need to see a miracle from God. Amen. That you, you come to the table with, with something that, uh, that you need a miracle. You need God in. You can't fix it yourself. It's Maybe a it's a situation, yep. a mountain, a uh, person, a family member, uh, but even your church. I'd like, to, I'd like to, to pray for the village church right now, too. Think about what happened in this little church when God worked that miracle. I want you to know it set that church on fire. Right now, the devil is trying to do everything he can to destroy the village church. Friends, I believe because all true prayer comes from God, I believe it's God's will that we're having this this weekend of prayer right now because he wants to work a miracle in your life. But not only that, he wants to work a miracle in the village church. He wants to set the village church on fire. Uh, there's going to come a day really soon where you're going to be able to come back to church and we need some mm-hmm. excitement level. We need every hands on deck, all hands on deck. Uh, we've got, we've got a, we've got a war going on and Jesus needs foot soldiers. That's right. So he's wanting to work a miracle in the village church. Amen. He wants to get people excited that, that like Cindy said, we don't understand how it works, but we just know that God worked. We came together and prayed and That's God right. showed up. That's right. And I have not shared my favorite verse with you, but anyone that's been around me very long will know very quickly that uh, one of the anthem verses that I I was standing on was Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that Cindy, put your name in there, that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You know, that, that verse is powerful. It says, it, it doesn't say, is God able? He might be able. This could happen. No, it says that he is able. He's able, friends. Amen. He is able. Cindy never, she just wanted a husband that would come uh, to church that that would uh, that would sit beside her in the pew, 
uh, God's got a sense of humor. Yeah, that doesn't, yeah. it still doesn't. I'm preaching now. <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, but God did it seemingly abundantly above what she could ever thought or imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he wants to do in your life. And so can I just yeah, really quick sure. encourage you? Um, you know, you, you may be asking, I don't, I don't know how to pray. Well, a simple thing you can do is you can take that verse. You can take any verse, but I'm just going to use this one because it's one of my favorites. And you can take it and you can write it down and you can personalize it. And you can, you can just make it as simple as you want it to be. You can say, Lord, you, you, you tell me that you are able, that you can do things that, and put your name there, I'll just use mine, that Cindy can't even think about. I yeah. can't even wrap my mind around, but you say that you will even do above all, exceedingly abundantly above things that I'm even thinking right now. Right now, I'm thinking that this is all you can do, but maybe, just maybe, Lord, you could do this, that. Write it down. Write it on paper. Pray it out loud. Hear yourself say it and claim it, and it will make a difference. Amen. That's Amen. Ephesians 3.20. So what we're going to do right now is, like we promised, we're going to we're going to, let's let's have a breakout, ten minutes. We'll say it's right now at seven thirty-seven. Uh, let's break out for like ten minutes in 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 groups, and whatever that whatever that situation is, whatever whoever that person is, you can claim Ephesians three twenty. He's able to do it seemingly abundantly above what you're thinking or asking. Amen. Uh, so just spend some time in prayer. Ask him for that, and then we'll come back in, in uh, uh, close to 10 minutes, and, and we'll, we'll open it up for question and answers. I'm going to uh, – we'll open up for question and answers. Okay, so 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. Now it's the time for God to work miracles.
Okay, in our remaining part of our prayer time, I'm going to ask for a few volunteers to pray. Um, if it, Naomi Parson, if I could get you to lift up a a uh, maybe a short prayer, and then uh, Dwayne, if you could Anderson, and then uh, Pastor Jeff, if you, if you're available, uh, Dwayne could tell me if he was available. He might not be available uh, in front of a place where he could pray, but. Uh, Naomi, would you would you start first, please? So, Rick, Naomi is actually in the sanctuary. Oh, she is. Okay. Dwayne, could you pick a few? Could you? Could uh, well, you know no, who's? Both, both Jeff and Naomi are here at the church, and okay. they come and sit right where I'm at right now, and they can pray. Um, okay. But in until they come, um, I'll go ahead and pray once and then. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you, Dwayne. Yeah. Father in heaven, we know the example of Jesus that after many, many hours of uh, working and, and healing people and being around the crowds and being on the go all day long, he was very, very tired, but it was from moments of private time and prayer with you that he came away refreshed and ready to continue on in, in the mission that he had come to do. And Father, the disciples saw this and um, they were um, very uh, puzzled, not puzzled, but they were very curious. How is it, Lord, that this happens? And so this is the time when they asked Jesus, you know, teach us to pray. And yeah. uh, and so, Father, um, we see from the example here of Rick and Cindy and, and other times in our own lives that, yes, um, by praying to you, we receive uh, help and uh, uh, renewal and also um, uh, restoration of, of energy and, and being able to continue on in mission for you. And so I pray, Father, that you would uh, continue to guide us and draw us uh, to have this time of prayer with you. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Naomi and Bill are here and also Jeff. So Okay, thank you. Sit right there on the chair and your picture will show up. Uh, yeah, right there, you just go ahead and pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you and praise you for today. Lord, we've looked forward to this time for, for months. We have prayed in our prayer group over and over for the blessing that you are giving to this village church this weekend. And, and Lord, we're, we're seeing some answers to prayer tonight, right now. Because we have asked and asked. And Lord, we just thank you for the picture that is being painted before us about the mighty God we serve, the big God. Mm -hmm. the model us, a faithful God. Oh, we, we just want to say again, we love you and thank you. Thank you, Lord, for blessing the Village Church through Rick and Cindy. And we thank you for their testimony. We thank you for the love that they have and for all the glory you gives to Jesus in your name. Amen. 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 Father God, I want to agree with Naomi's prayer. And we have about this meeting for months in our prayer group that we have. Do you have some idea how we can? And we also pray, Father, that we prop this up so I can't, since I can't get it on the TV. No. Go ahead, Bill. We just continue, to, Father, to pray that you will bless Cindy and Rick as they bring the message to you, to us. And we just also, I want to praise you for what you did for us. Coming down from heaven, leaving a place mm -hmm. less, and coming mm -hmm. to earth that was so dark and dreary, knowing that you might not even make it back but having faith in your father that you would. And now that you have been successful, we can have success through you. 
So we just yeah. pray for what you have done for us in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to praise you and thank you for Jesus Christ, who, uh, although he didn't have to, he considered it a joy to to reclaim us as his children. And, and that love that you have for us, as expressed through Christ, I just pray that that love will be, will grow ever more in every one of our hearts, and especially for those that we are lifting up to you in prayer right now. I know that every person that is a part of this, either by Zoom or in person here in the Village Church or places uh, we don't know where, um, but every person comes to you with a need. And I pray that, that you would supply that need with the riches of your grace and mercy and that you will do like that verse says that Paul says, exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or can even imagine. Mm -hmm. Do that for us, Lord. You promised that you would, and I know that you will, that your name would be honored and that you would be, uh, in this world, you'd be um, lifted up. And I want to thank you for your messengers, Rick and Cindy. I pray your anointing on them and their responsibilities. I also want to lift up to you, whoever is on this call, this yeah. conference, uh, and their new this Sabbath, whatever they're doing, whatever their situation, yes. Lord, you know each one, and I just commit them to you, and thank you in Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Pastor Jill. Thank you. Father in heaven, uh, uh, I'm really excited about what's taking place here, because especially the picture that's even been painted in the prayers of how much you love us, and the joy that, that's in your heart as you, as you get to work in our lives. When we look at the price you paid for us, we know you've got something very, very special planned for us. So you want to work in our lives, especially when we're praying for freedom from a grip on sin, and especially when we're praying for your church. I want to pray for the village church right now uh, with this COVID and the separation and the isolation. There's a lot of people out there that are lonely. There's a lot of people out there that are depressed, that are discouraged. There's a lot of people out there that their, their addictions are, are really running rampant. Uh, we know because of a the enemy is is got them in a in an isolated place right now lord we pray for the village church we pray for unity we pray lord that they would be able to come together and they could pray together and they could love on each other and just wait for the time that they can all come back in the village church and worship there together thank you dear god for what you're doing in lives thank you i plead the blood of jesus on every prayer that was lifted up lord and i can just picture right now the command post of heaven angels being sent heaven being emptied out right now all the angels being sent to work on behalf of all those that we've lifted up prayers for thank you for that beautiful picture that you've given us of what happens when we pray mm -hmm. in jesus christ's name we pray amen amen amen, amen. okay uh well we can we can expect god to show up in a big way uh, because we prayed to him now, he's a God that can bring something out of nothing. And uh, so just keep those prayers going up. Maybe now, if it's okay, we could, we could break out the remaining part of our time and just answer some questions. Now, what, what we'll probably need to do is if you could just send your questions in or comments uh, on, on the Zoom uh, line to, to, to the chat box. And, and Dwayne can relay the questions to us. We probably should have already told you that, so you could go ahead and be getting them out there. But um, well, what's I, some I of the questions that you while. might have? And Cindy you know, can share something while you're doing so that. So while you're kind of um, um, thinking about maybe some questions you may have and typing those in, just want to share some thoughts. Um, you know, I know what it feels like to have an impossible situation. And I would bet that you do too. And there was just some words that um, <clears throat> I recently came across that, um, it's, it's to a song and it says there is no impossible with you and it says there is no heart you cannot rescue no war you cannot win no story so over that it cannot start again no pain you won't use no wall you won't break through it might be too much for me but there is no impossible with you and I just want to encourage you that 
there is nothing impossible with God. He is the God of possibilities. Yeah. So I just want to encourage you in that tonight. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but they had 16 soldiers mm -hmm. guarding one man. Yeah. Was it because Peter was such a bad guy? <laughs> no. It's because God is such a big God. Amen. He wanted to paint this picture to you so that you would have hope in your situation even right now tonight. Amen. Uh, that, that God is the God of impossible. Right. He, can, he can open the locked doors. Amen. He sure can. So, Dwayne, do you have any comments oh. or questions yet? One, one quick question. This will be an easy question to answer. What was the page number of the testimony uh, from volume two that you shared? Page 377. 377. Okay. Two, uh, no. two selected messages, uh, 377. Okay. No other questions at this point. Okay. Hey, well, that's <laughs> faith in God there that, that he can, that he can move and, and he Amen. will. Um, Amen. Praise God. You know. Well, Go I was just thinking about, um, you know, and I, I, I will probably if Tom, uh, allows share more of this tomorrow, but you know, there are a lot of reasons that are, maybe I should say excuses that people don't pray. And I don't know if you could type in the chat box, but, um, I'll just tell you that most of the time when I, when I ask people, like, what are some reasons that we're not praying? Because I'm not saying that you're not praying. It's just that people come up to me and say, my prayer life is bad. I'm not praying. And, and we can use so many different things. Sometimes it's because we don't think God hears our prayers. We think that our prayers aren't good enough, that they're just not, you know, perfect a, enough. A lot of people think that they're not good enough. Exactly. That they, they've, they've done something bad. so bad. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that know. they cannot. Or they say, I've prayed before. I've prayed over and over and over again, and I have not heard from God. Sometimes people say, well, I, you know, I just don't have time to pray. I'm too busy. Or the one that is, is hard to hear, but I've heard it. I'm not sure I believe. Well, I just want to challenge you to to. Do it anyway. Pray anyway. Nike has a slogan, and it's just do it. You know, pray even when you don't feel like it, and trust that God will break yeah. through that wall. I know in me personally, on what Cindy's talking about there, uh, a lot of times we get to a point in our life that that uh, we we really we we kind of we, we don't even have faith in ourselves. Faith that we're not just not good enough. We're not righteous enough to come to God in prayer. One, one of my favorite things to do is to go through the book of Psalms. And I know that um, me personally, Most there was a point there. in my life that I didn't know how to talk to God. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know you how to You can't get it without him. Zoom. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how to talk to God. And, uh, and so what I would do. Is Whoops. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It put him down to the end of the list. My cursor um was on the wrong line and i pressed there we go okay can i go now Dwayne? yeah so um i was trying to mute someone else and their row was right next to yours and um okay um my cursor wasn't on the right spot when i clicked so it muted that's okay you. no problem um, uh, from, I, if you can repeat what you were i know that about. yeah i was saying a lot of times you know just this is about teaching us how to pray and a lot of times we might not have assurance of our prayer life. We might not be assured that we're good enough or that God hears our prayers. One of the things I found that helped me out was going through the book of Psalms. I'd go through the book of Psalms and a lot of the Bible speaks uh, to me, but it's like Psalms speaks for me. Uh, it just, so I go through the Psalms and I pray the Psalms back to God. Um, you know, one of the ways that God give me uh, victory you know, I was a slave to, to cocaine. I was a slave to, to lust. I had a terrible lust problem. I drank alcohol every single day. I smoked cigarettes and, uh, and I had and, and smokeless tobacco too. Yes, I was a mess. I, I was a mess. But, I, but, but, uh, 
but God gave me victory and he gave me a new life. And the way mm -hmm. he did it is I would take Bible promise. I take the Bible and I would pray the promises in the Bible. I'd put my name in those promises and I would pray those promises to back to the Lord. In in Second Peter chapter one, verse three and four, God tells us that He gives us these precious promises, this, these mm -hmm. these great promises Amen. that that by these we can be partakers of His divine nature. There is power in the Word of God, Amen. and when and the most powerful prayers there is is when you lay your finger, you know, on on one of those scriptures. I, I, I love to quote Corey Ten Boom. She she would lay her finger on the promise. And she said, there it is, Lord, read it for yourself in her Dutch accent. I've heard others say that. But it's, it's about claiming scriptures is one of the most powerful things that we can do to pray in our prayer life. Amen. Because we know it's God's will. Amen. Okay, I do have some questions now. Okay. I would like to know how many minutes a day you pray. Sometimes my prayers seem so repetitive. What should I do? Yeah. I, I I would like to answer that. Uh, I pray continuously. That's what changed my life. But I'm going to put a but there. But I found out that if I start the day, if I start the day and, and then set aside time with God uh, if, 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 within the early hours of the day, if I do that, and then when I go out and about, my prayer life during the day is going to be better. It's like I'm tuned into his voice more. I'm tuned. It's kind of like, tuning into one of those old radio stations. You know, you'd use a tuner. If I spend some time with God at the very beginning of my day in prayer, and, and I pray through, as I read the Bible, I'm praying. I, I'm talking to God in prayer. If I do that, I tune into God. And then as I go about my day, I just kind of talk to God. I just kind of keep that continuous prayer line going. That's what helped me overcome all my addictions uh, that had a hold on me is I just filled my life with Jesus. I, 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 I kept that connection going with him. But I will say that as far as a specific set aside time, you know, Rick and I pray every morning before we get out of the bed together. Yeah. We might pray during the day several times about other things. And then of course we, we say our prayers together at, at night. Individually we have our own prayers, but you know, um, I, th I always say if, if, if you're not praying any, then if you just pray a minute or two, that's, that's even more. If you pray five minutes, it's not a time thing. It's a quality thing. More than anything, yeah. it's a quality. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, another question. We have many people in our church who have children or relatives or friends that are not following God. What counsel do you have that can encourage people that it makes a difference when it seems hopeless. I, there's, there's probably several things I'd like to address, but I would say that, you know, by our life, by our example, that alone is, is, a, is a testimony. When we individually in the church are seeking God and, and, and God, because you can't, how can I say, you cannot, spend time with God in prayer, in study, and it not change you. It's, it's a cause and effect. And as we do that, I mean, there's nothing we can necessarily say to these people. I mean, we can say things, but we can't, we can't make them feel bad or anything like that. But as we love them, as they see God manifest in our life, it, it will get their attention. It's actually yeah. what changed him yes, yes and we'll talk more about that tomorrow yes, so we'll address but, that maybe more it, tomorrow as well i think the way we live our life is so important mm -hmm. we we um we live in a dark world right now mm -hmm. and our witness I, i'm i'm not a you know i'm a pastor but i don't but i don't claim to be a pastor so much as i am a witness a witness of what jesus has done in my life mm -hmm. and so i don't preach when i go around friends that are in hopeless situations and out there in the world i don't preach to them I witness to them. Yeah. I tell them what oh, Jesus has done in my exactly. life. Exactly. And they can't argue that. And and they can see something different in you. And you know through the Holy Spirit, God is is reaching their heart through you. Exactly. So be a witness more than a preacher to them. Amen. Okay. Another uh, thought is, can we hear more of your testimony for those who haven't heard your story? 
<laughs> oh, sure. We'll, what we'll do, we'll we intertwine, love to tell our we will intertwine our whole testimony uh, to, uh, through the Mars messages, too. We've only got probably about a, a, just a little bit into it uh, yeah. t today. It, it, it didn't. It didn't go yeah. uh, as far, but we'll, sure. we, will, we will include our testimony a lot more of it as time goes on. Absolutely. Tomorrow. And you can read all about it and pray big. <laughs> yes. Okay, another question. I have a challenge quieting my intrusive environment or thoughts during prayer. I notice my mind will wonder, do you have practical ways to refocus? Yes. Definitely. You know, you know, my lifestyle may, and I'm, I'm just made this way, I'm wired this way. My thoughts are going to, uh, always going. And uh, I have learned that it helps me to, when I'm with God, I pray out loud. Uh, one of the things that, that, that I do is um, I pray out loud. And, and by doing that, I, st I stay focused better. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and, and, it, and I both, I hear it. I, I, I say it and I hear it. And so it just seems like it keeps me there connected with God a lot more. Praying uh, out loud has helped a lot. And it's very biblical too. We know that Jesus prayed out loud in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, it, it's very clear that when he was praying, he said, you know, uh, it's, uh, Jesus prayed out loud also. Now, I've been told that, that, that oh, I don't want to pray out loud because, because um, the, the devil will hear my prayers. It, let me read a quote with you out of, out of uh, uh, messages, I think, to young people. It says, at the sound of fervent prayer, Satan's whole host trembles. Uh, and and so, so if you, if you want to make Satan tremble, you just start saying, praying in Jesus' name. Amen. You don't have to worry about the devil sticking around. And I will add to that, it's important, I think, to find a, a consistent place um, uh, free of distractions, uh, a place that where you just, if, some people have prayer closets in their home. I, that is a, we have a, we have a friend that we're studying the Bible with and it's under their stairs and you walk in and he's got pictures of his family and picture frames and he's got his Bible and a, a, it, it's just so they, they can. impressive. And so, but if you don't have a prayer closet, find a place that you consistently go to that you're not change, you know, changing locations all the time. That helps me a lot. Find a good, comfortable um, spot that you can pray. Okay. Another question. Cindy, you mentioned that you wouldn't have a testimony if you left your husband. Do you understand how your book, Pray Big, is taking your testimony around the world? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, sometimes I forget that. So thank you for the reminder. <laughs> hey, great is his faithfulness. I, I will tell you that, you know, when I prayed that prayer that morning, I had no idea that only a few short years later, we would be asked to go to 3ABN. And we were getting ready that morning to go into the studio. And, and it's like God just stopped me. And he said, not only have I given you a testimony, Cindy, but I'm going to let you share it with the entire world. And I just, I, I, I still pinch myself that, that, that God would, would allow me to be part of this. And I am just so thankful. Great is his faithfulness. Yes. Amen. Oh, somebody else coming on. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, they're muted. Um, I don't have any other further questions at this time. Okay. Well, it has been a, a real pleasure. Like I said, it's not the same as being face to face and getting to visit with you and pray with you in person. But I, I hope that this will um, at least encourage us until we can be together soon. Yes. What we'd like to do, Dwayne, and all those out there listening right now, is we, Cindy and I, would like to serve you any way that you can can use us to to help you, to encourage you, that God hears your prayers, that He that He is a God of of that all things are possible, that He loves you, that He cares about you. We want to be part of this. So tomorrow, 
Uh, if there's something that in particular that we, you'd like to discuss that, that would be meaningful to some of you out there, we want to hear about it. We want to know about it. And so just let Dwayne or Pastor Jeff know and, and um, that we can sure discuss it and pray about it. Because there is Amen. power when we come together and pray together. Amen. There is power in corporate prayer. Praise God. Okay, so with that, um, we will be together again tomorrow at 3 o'clock. And for those of you that are in the sanctuary here at the Village Church, we will have uh, the connections made so that you can see it there in the sanctuary. And for those of you that are all on Zoom, you're welcome back uh, tomorrow at 3 in the afternoon. And then there's another session at 6 in the evening uh, uh, here in uh, College Place. And uh, so we're grateful for this time together and uh, thought maybe we would just close with a word of prayer. And I have one of the other pastors from the Village Church here with me. His name is John Roney, and I'll have him do, give us our closing prayer tonight. Praise God. Thank, Thank you, you, Dwayne. All right, let's pray. Dear God, just want to... I praise you so much for being such an amazing God, for being a God who hears and answers our prayers. I want to thank you for uh, Ron and Cindy Mercer and just their powerful testimony about how prayer has changed their lives. And God, I just pray that it will inspire those of us who are able to listen to their story tonight and that we will uh, be more driven to pray and just to immerse ourselves in a relationship with you, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Jesus loves you. Thank you, Dwayne, for everything. Yeah, we love you, Dwayne. Thank you. And all Naomi right. and all the other ones, your prayer team. Such a blessing. That's right. All right. Well, have a good evening. And uh, okay. good night. Okay. See you tomorrow. We love bye -bye. you too, Rick and Cindy. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey. <laughs>